In today's video, we look how two Liverpool County line operations went to war over a town in Wales. We grow in tit for tat violence, ending in the brutal murder of a rival member. The murder of Matthew Casty in Connors Quay, North Wales, in 2017, was a shocking and brutal crime. Emblematic of the growing wave of violence associated with dealing and related gang activity in the UK. Matthew Cassidy, a 19 year old from Liverpool, connected to an organised criminal group, was lured into a dangerous situation and was fatally stabbed in what prosecutors described as a planned attack, orchestrated by a gang of dealers, also from Liverpool, that had been fighting over Connors Key for several months. Two key figures were identified David Woods and Leslie Baines for their roles in the murder. Today, we'll explore the circumstances surrounding Matthew Cassidy's murder, the legal concepts of joint enterprise, the roles of Woods and Baines in the crime, the trial and its outcome, and the wider implications of the case for understanding dealers and trafficking in the UK. To fully grasp the significance of Matthew Cassidy's murder, is essential to understand the context in which the crime occurred. In recent years, the phenomenon of county lines has become a major issue in the UK. This term refers to practice of dealers from larger cities such as Liverpool, London and Manchester expanding their operations into smaller towns and rural areas. Dealers use mobile phone lines, referred to as county lines, to direct the distribution of products and often exploit vulnerable individuals, including children and addicts to act as couriers and dealers. North Wales, where Connors Key is located, became a target for Liverpool-based gangs looking to extend their influence. These gangs are known for using violence to enforce their control over new territories, and turf wars often erupt when rival groups attempt to encroach on one another's markets. Matthew Cassidy, a young man involved in the trade as a dealer, found himself caught in the crossfire of such a turf war, ultimately leading to his violent death. On May the 12th, 2017, Matthew Cassidy, 19 years old, from Hoyton, Liverpool, that evening went into a restaurant in Shotton. As he left Walk and Go with another teenager he dined with, he had less than an hour and a half to live. The final moments of his life were violent to say the least. A resident of a block of flats in nearby Connors Quay, where Matthew was murdered, recalled hearing horrifying screams. One of the voices saying, I'm going to effing kill you. Matthew Cassidy was stabbed to death in Connors Quay after being lured to a flat in Bethel Place, an area known as a major dealer hotspot. What was known of the attack is that he struggled from that location, probably ran from his assailant, made it up the first floor, but has either fallen or been dragged backwards and his body found on the landing. He was further stabbed with the same kitchen knife as he lay dying. He had a total of nine wounds. Matthew Cassidy had come from Liverpool, a city notorious for its organised criminal groups in dealing and distribution operations, and it is believed he was involved in the dealer's transportation and distribution of the product. His murder was a calculated act of violence, intended as a warning to others as who might attempt to change the control of the Liverpool County line of dealers, who had already set up their turf off the town of Connors Quay. The fatal attack on Matthew Cassidy was not a random act, but rather a premeditated killing that stem from tensions between the two Liverpool County Line dealers. Matthew Cassidy, the crew was working for, was viewed as an outsider, encroaching on the territory of the established Liverpool County Lines. The orchestrators of the attack, David Woods and Leslie Baines, were part of this settled Liverpool crew of dealers, and their actions on the night of Cassidy's murder demonstrated their intent to eliminate him as a threat and push the new County Lines out of Connors Quay. Small towns are normally picked up by county line dealers due to smaller police activity and scarce supply in rural towns of product. Matthew Cassidy was stabbed multiple times in what was described as a frenzied and vicious attack. Despite attempts by paramedics to save him, he died at the scene from his injuries. The nature of the crime shot both the local community and law enforcement, as it highlighted the dangerous escalation of violence associated with county lines. David Woods had been involved for six months, working for a gang supply chain from Liverpool City itself. David Woods wanted to protect his patch. 
Matthew Cassidy was believed to be employed to take over the product to the scene in Connor's Key. Davy Woods realised what was going on. He wasn't going to put up with it. It is believed Davy Woods went out to befriend Matthew Cassidy to lure Cassidy to his death on that day. Davy Woods and Leslie Baines were both charged under the legal doctrine of joint enterprise, a controversial aspect of UK law that allows multiple individuals to be convicted of a crime, even if they did not directly commit the act. Joint enterprise is a principle that holds that anyone who aids, encourages or assists in a crime can be held as equally responsible as a person who physically carried out the offence. In the case of Cassidy's murder, Woods had committed the attack but Leslie Baines was accused of setting it up with Woods. However, under joint enterprise, they were found guilty because they had actively participated in the planning and execution of the attack. The prosecution argued that the pair had played significant roles in luring Cassidy to the flat where the murder took place and that they had been fully aware of the attention to kill him. Joint enterprise is a powerful tool in prosecuting gang-related violence as it allows law enforcement to target not just the individuals who physically carry out their violent acts, but also those who support, plan or otherwise contribute to the crime. In gang-related cases, where violent acts are often the result of coordinated efforts, joint enterprise provides a meaning of holding all members of criminal conspiracy accountable. David Woods, aged 20 at the time of the trial, and Leslie Baines, aged 48, were central figures in a conspiracy to murder Matthew Cassidy. Both men were linked to dealers in the trade in Connors Key, and both had connections to Liverpool-based organised criminal groups that were vying for control of the area. The prosecution had successfully argued that the murder of Matthew Cassidy was the result of a premeditated plan orchestrated by Woods and Baines to eliminate him as a rival. Davy Woods was heavily involved in the local dealing and played a critical role in the events leading to Cassidy's murder. He was accused of being part of the group that planned the attack and helping to lure Cassidy to the flat where he was killed. Woods' involvement demonstrates his deep entanglement in the gang culture and the lengths to which his associates were willing to go to protect their interests. Leslie Baines was also implicated in the conspiracy as a more experienced member of the gang. Baines played a key role in facilitating the murder by helping to arrange the circumstances that led to Cassidy being at the flat. Though not directly involved in the stabbing, Baines' knowledge of the participation in the plot made him equally culpable under joint enterprise. Both men denied their involvement in the murder, but the evidence presented during the trial, including phone records, witness testimonies and forensic evidence, painted a damning picture of their roles in the crime. The prosecution demonstrated that both Woods and Baines had been fully aware of the plan to kill Cassidy and were both active in the planning of the crime. The trial of David Woods and Leslie Baines took place in 2018 at Mole Crown Court. Throughout the trial, the prosecution presented a strong case that showed how two men had been involved in the conspiracy to murder Matthew Cassidy. Phone records were a crucial piece of evidence, revealing communication between the defendants in the hours leading up to the murder. The prosecution argued that Woods and Baines had jointly orchestrated the attack, with the intention of sending a message to rival gangs. Matthew Cassidy from Highton was seen as a threat to the established Liverpool operations in Connors Quay, and his murder was meant to eliminate that threat while asserting the dominance of Woods and Baines' group. The defence, on the other hand, sought to downplay the involvement of Woods and Baines, arguing they had not been directly responsible for Cassidy's death and that they had not intended the attack to result in murder. However, the overwhelming evidence of the participation of the planning and the execution of the crime undermined the claims. Witness testimonies from individuals who had been in the vicinity of the flat that night of the murder further implicated the two men. In the end, the jury found both Woods and Baines guilty of murder under the Joint Enterprise Doctrine. Woods was sentenced to 27 years in prison, while Baines received a sentence of 26 years. Their conviction sent a clear message about the seriousness at which the court viewed their roles in Cassidy's murder and their participation in gang-related violence.
The sentence of woods and bangs to lengthy prison terms was seen as a significant victory for law enforcement in their efforts to tackle gang-related crime in North Wales. The police and prosecutors hailed the verdict as a testament to the effectiveness of joint enterprise doctrine in addressing the complexities of organised crime, where multiple individuals contribute to the commission of violent offences. However, the use of joint enterprise has not been without controversy. Critics of the doctrine argue that it can lead to individuals being unfairly convicted for crimes they did not directly commit, and it sometimes imposes harsh sentences on people whose involvement in the crime may have been peripheral. In the case of Woods and Baines, however, their deep involvement in the planning and execution of the murder left little doubt about their culpability. The local community in Connors Key was left reeling from the brutal nature of the Cassidy's murder and the revelations that came out during the trial. The case underscored the growing presence of organised crime and drug-related violence in small towns across the UK. As county line gangs extend their operations into these areas, for many residents, the murder of Matthew Cassidy was a stark reminder how the drug trade had brought fear and violence into their community. The murder of Matthew Cassidy and the subsequent trial of David Woods and Leslie Baines offers valuable insights into the broader issue of gang violence and trafficking in the UK. The rise of county line operations had been a significant driver of violence in smaller towns and rural areas, where gangs from major cities established control over new markets. These operations often involved the exploitation of vulnerable individuals, who were coerced into selling products and committing violent acts on behalf of gang leaders. The case also highlights the challenges faced by law enforcement in tackling organised crime. Gangs involved in county line operations are often highly mobile and use sophisticated methods to avoid detection, including burner phones, coded language and the exploitation of addicts and the homeless as couriers. Police forces in smaller towns may lack the resources and expertise needed to effectively combat these gangs, leading to a rise in violent crime in previously peaceful areas. The successful prosecution of Woods and Baines under the Joint Enterprise Doctrine demonstrates the importance of holding all members of a criminal conspiracy accountable for their actions by targeting not only the individuals who carry out violent acts but also those who plan, facilitate and encourage such crimes. Law enforcement can disrupt their operations and bring those responsible to justice. The murder of Matthew Cassidy was a tragic and brutal crime that exposed the violent underbelly of dealers in the UK. The involvement of Davy Woods and Leslie Baines in the conspiracy to murder Cassidy demonstrated the lengths that which gangs will go to to protect their territories and assert dominance over rival groups. Their convictions under joint enterprise doctrine were a significant legal victory, sending a clear message to those involved in gang-related violence they will be held accountable. The case also highlighted the growing problem of county lines trafficking and its impact on small towns and rural communities. As gangs continue to expand their operations beyond major cities, the violence and exploitation associated with the trade will likely remain a pressing issue for law enforcement and policymakers. The murder of Matthew Cassidy serves as a grim reminder of the devastating consequences of the violence and the urgent need for coordinated efforts to tackle organised crime at both the local and national levels. It's a growing problem based upon the success of what is basically a very ruthless business model. The business model? County lines. Its sales reps, children and young people hungry for money and a stake in society. Urban gangs have found their traditional markets in big cities have now become saturated and dangerous. By expanding their business into provinces, sending young people there to act as runners, they not only stand to make huge profits, but have less resistance from local dealers and a lower risk of being known by police. It's now a big problem that's not going to go away anytime soon. <laughs>